Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today i got a neat little product here called the NetCat Pro 2 from uh, uh, Greenly. And uh, as you know, we're a Greenly uh, distributor, uh, but at the same time, we're also a cabling company. We've been cabling for over 25 years, and we've had numerous tests equipment um, that uh, test different, uh, you know, cable lens tests, the, the quality of the cable, and if we pinned it out right. You know, before we start, let's talk a little bit about testing. Um, I have a philosophy here that I tell all my uh, technicians that somehow the electronics in the wall, in the cable, in the patch panel, and in the jack uh, really understand and they know that when you don't test something, it will not work. So uh, it's for sure that if you do not test every single pull uh, when you're cabling for voice or data, um, that you will have go-backs. And go-backs affect your credibility and um, your integrity. Uh, people say, well, you finished the job and now I plugged in, it didn't work. And of course, it's not fair to the IT staff. If you're a cabler, uh, they're trying to troubleshoot a problem. and. They think your cabling is fine, but they find out, uh, or they're working on their equipment, and they find out later that it's not their equipment, it's a, um, a cross pair uh, at your jack. And boy, I don't, I don't know, you know, you spend, uh, those IT guys that don't do cabling every day can spend a couple hours uh, researching a problem and, and full of frustration, and of course they have bosses too. So you want to test every single cable pull. I know some cable companies out there will uh, say, well, we test one in five. That's not good enough. You need to test every single cable pull. And in 25 years, I've not gone back once on a, um, a cabling job uh, that a jack was uh, not working unless it was damaged by the customer or someone else. So I've never gone back. And go backs cost a lot of money. So you really want a a, a piece of test equipment and uh, of course this NetCat Pro 2 is an excellent piece of test equipment and, and uh, Greenly has put out different handheld test devices as you see here uh, over the years and, and we have had many many models and this is a fine model it does a lot of cool things a lot of neat things that uh, you should have if you're a cabler um, and uh, you should be as I said before you should be testing every single cable because if, there's, if you did 10 cable pulls and you only test 9, I guarantee that one you missed that you didn't test, that'll be the one you'll be doing go-backs on. It'll hurt your credibility and it will hurt your profitability. It only takes a second to test. And uh, over the years, I've seen different testers. You know, we used to have a five, $6,000 tester uh, called a MicroScan, I believe it was. Um, and wow, it did all sorts of wonderful things that were really impressive to people that didn't know anything about cabling. Um, but it also did some other things too. You could print reports and things like that. And, and a couple of years back, 5, 10, 15 years ago, customers really wanted those reports on every single cable pull you pulled, um, you know, that showed all, you know, near end, far end, crosstalk, and all that. And that's fine. There's some customers that still would like that. Uh, the vast majority of customers, especially in small business, they just want the thing to work. So if you can prove that it works and that the cabling is right and the wire map is right, they don't care about whether you can produce a piece of paper that, that certifies that it's right. Plus that document often would cost some money because you'd have to store it in your tester, you'd have to go back, you'd have to print it, and then you had to deliver it. So there was extra labor involved. And, and I see more and more of the industry getting away from that type of documentation in, in most applications. Not all, but in most. Uh, also, if you're unscrupulous, you could just test one jack, say it was absolutely great, and just rename the document each time you printed it for different customers. Um, and people caught on to that also. So if you're an ethical tester, you'll test every single, or I should say if you're an ethical uh, cable uh, installer, you will test every single cable you install and you'll make sure it works and you won't have any go backs. And this is a great little tester. I really like it. Some of the things I like about it just on the, the start is the fact that it has this nice uh, rubbery type of um, a tough, I don't know what it is, plastic, some sort of thing. It has a little bit of give to it. It's easy to handle. You can really hold on to it and it really uh, 
it is fantastic. It, it, it runs on a 9 volt battery in the back. It's a touch screen, so it has one of these little cool things. Now, in uh, using this tester, I don't use the uh, little mouse, but you can. Um, yeah, but you can also just use your, your hand on the touch screen and, and do as you wish. Um, but I like the, also the shape, and when they're perfectly square, it creates a problem for me. And I'll tell you what the problem is, is I usually put my tester back in the uh, room where I have um, you know, the data racks, the relay racks, uh, where the patch panel is. And I take this little device and what I'll do is I will tie wrap it right to the, uh, you know, right next to where the, uh, uh, the patch panel is. And when I tie wrap it there, uh, then what I can do is I take a, a long piece of cable like this and I plug it in the, the top, a long piece of patch cord, and I plug it in the top and then I, all I need to do is just move the patch uh, around to test each of the jacks and um, and the jacks have already been identified so I know the numbers of them and things like that so you want to identify the jack first and then you want to test it and you want to identify the jack label it then test it and uh, that's the way to do it so if you're doing a big install that's how you would do it of course I get radios and, and the guy in the data room has a radio and the, the people out on the uh, floor that are uh, pushing the other end of the tester um, you know, into the outlet, they're, they're there um, um, telling them what jack it's in and you can just plug it into your patch panel at that jack and test it. Uh, another nice thing that I like about this is that the remote, and you can see it here, the remote is right here. And you have a coax tester. Now, we don't really use a lot of coax these days, but we still uh, occasionally have to pull coax for some reason. Uh, but you have your RJ45 end uh, that just slides right here. So you always have it. It just slides right in and snaps. I really like that because I don't lose this. And that's what's really nice about it. And uh, later on, I'm going to show you some other adapters that don't come with the NC500. Um, but it is an accessory kit that goes with this. Now, some other things is you also have a little thing like this where you can test continuity. Um, and other things you want to test with it. I really don't use it that much or at all actually, but it comes with it. Of course you have your little barrel where you, um, if you're going to use this for coax on a regular basis, you can just put it right in there like that. I don't uh, and so I don't keep it there. What I do is take the little short coax cable that they give you in the pack and I just attach it to the end so I don't lose it, but I keep that in my, my bag. And then uh, lastly, is this a short um, uh, patch cord? And in this case, this is a shielded patch cord. This does test um, all categories along with shielded. So this makes it a really a nice little system. You know, I kind of call this like a pickup truck tester, you know? It's like you can do so many things with it and, uh, and, and it tests so many things. It's, it's really fantastic. So uh, let's start looking at some of the things it tests. It uh, obviously has a touchscreen display and it has contrast uh, adjustment with backlight. Uh, it tests a shielded pair, um, uh, they call it STP, shielded twisted pair, plus unshielded twisted pair or coax. So there's nothing else out there besides those three. And most of the times it's unshielded twisted pair, but some of the new categories are going to have um, a shielded twisted pair. So as you go higher up in the category range, Cat 7, Cat 8, things like that, you're going to see a uh, shielded twisted pair. Um, it has a uh, tone generator, which is really cool. Um, has four different tones in that tone generator. And um, also it, it can test cables from zero to 2,000 foot. Now, rarely you're going to run across a 2,000-foot cable. But just as a side note, you might find this interesting. I worked for a uh, professional person that you would know that their, her name is on TV all the time and all. And she bought this mansion here in Southern California. It was huge. And when I pulled a telephone cable from the telephone room out to the furthest phone in her mansion, it was close to 1,000 foot, a whole box of cable. For a telephone and some of the older telephone systems digital analog 
can go that far, a uh, thousand foot. Of course, uh, voice over IP, you're talking about 100 meters, which is a little over 300 feet. So you can um, uh, test cables up to 2,000 feet, um, and it's a, T, a TDR uh, tester. So a TDR will give you the, the, the length, um, time domain reflective meter um, uh, is what TDR stands for. And what it does is it sends a signal down the cable, and once it gets to the, the end of the cable, um, it would actually bounce back from the end of the cable and it measures the time distance from the time the tone was sent or the electrical signal was sent till it was received back at the tester and that will tell you the footage and it's very accurate in most cases it's within uh, a foot or two. Um, identifies active network devices so it will, it will identify if you have a PC plugged into it or a hub and we're going to demonstrate that a little later. Uh, displays network dev devices capabilities. This is cool, and I will show you that in a second. Um, it can test patch cables, um, and plus it will give you a wire map. So it'll tell you if it's uh, cross-paired, if you have it pinned out wrong. I mean, this is really fantastic tester. This is like everything you need as a cable guy. Uh, detects opens and shorts and reversed and cross-pairs and split-pairs. Um, uh, you can also buy a... Uh, a, um, some, uh, I don't know what you call them, cable identifiers and so you can identify more than, than one pull at a time and I'm gonna, I'll show you that and how that works. Um, it's, it's also compatible with uh, different um, um, uh, tone uh, probes that you use in the industry so you really don't even need a toner anymore, you just need the probe which is kind of cool, it saves you an extra carrying something else. But let's demonstrate this, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this button down. You gotta hold down for two seconds, then you'll get the G, and then you'll get all the, the, uh, the, th the things on the screen, so you can see them at that point. Um, Multi-pair test, uh, that's for your RJ45s. Uh, One-pair tester, coax test, that's, that's gonna be for your coax cable, things like that. And then tracing tone. So let's, and plus, it has setup. You can, you know, contrast things like that. Um, languages, so you know, for our French friends uh, in France or up in Canada, a you can have it in French, right? A. So anyway, um, let's see. Let's do tone. Tone's kind of cool. So you have four different tones, and if you want to hear them, this is what they sound like. And then we'll go to the next tone. And the next one. I like that tone. That's cool. And then, of course, the last. It's nice to have different pairs for, I mean, different tones. And, and one of the reasons why that's nice is sometimes you have some sort of noise on the line or you get noise in the room and you really need something that's distinctive or if numerous people are um, toning things out, sometimes they uh, have different tones uh, than someone else is toning another cable, it makes it nice because you're not going to accidentally uh, mislabel. So let's go back, just push this and it goes back. And of course these instructions and uh, how these things are used and all, uh, we do have a PDF that's going to, it's on our website that you can look up and you have an instruction manual and how things work and everything else. And the one pair, I'm not even going to demonstrate the one pair, you just push it and it tells you whether it works. But here's a multi-pair tester and this is kind of cool. That's kind of a cool test. That's for your RJ45s, that's 99% of the time you're going to be working with the, uh, uh, that right here. And I'm going to press on it, hold it two seconds, let it go, and it comes up. It's testing, testing, and it shows nothing is attached. They're all zero foot away. So I want to demonstrate that. Now, the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate using an old patch cord that I have in the back. So I'm going to pull this off. And I got this old patch cord here. You can see it? We have a whole box full of old patch cords. And I'm going to plug it in to the remote. And then I'm going to plug it in the top of the tester. Then I'm going to tell it 
and if I can get this right, get the, the light on there, I'm going to retest. I hit the circle with the arrow and it's going to retest. It's going to come up with, ta da da da. Look at that, one to one, two to two, three to three, it's a straight through. And it's uh, 13, oh, one of them said 14, I don't know why. It might be on the edge of 13 or 14, but it, as you see, it also says ID number one. And what that is, is this tester um, is called number one. So uh, with this tester here, uh, it's the it's number one tester, it fits in the bottom of the case. You can get other uh, testers on the accessory kit that um, will identify number two, number three, number four, number five, things like that. Now, as I was looking for that patch cord in our wonderful supply of patch cords that just about every IT department has in America, a big box, you should probably throw them out, but I don't. I came across this cable, it looks really nice. It has a beautiful cable, it has that nice little 15 foot label that someone put on there. Of course, I don't like it because it doesn't have a jacket. Uh, I'm a jacket prone person. So let's plug this in and let's give this a test. And I'm going to show you something here that when I tested this in rehearsal, I said, ah, what's going on? And yet I may, after I'm done with this test, this is going to go in the trash and you'll see why. So I'm going to test it. This is not a good patch cord. Looks good. Doesn't work. Look at it. Only two pairs. That's a 10 base T patch cord. It only works on 10 base T. It won't work on anything. Actually, I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't even use it for anything uh, because of that. But if you notice, it says 14 foot uh, away. Again, that TDR meter is, uh, is, is really useful. Um, I remember a couple of years ago with our team, we would guess at how long a run is and we'd put our TDM meter on it and whoever was uh, the consistently closest uh, uh, got a free uh, ice cream at McDonald's that night on the way home. But anyway, that's, um, that's, a, that's a patch cord you do not want to keep. You want to throw that thing out because it will not work with uh, 100 base T, 1000 base T, you know, cat, the other categories of of installation, so you want to throw that patch cord out. But it is a cool thing, and it really does show you really neat stuff. So uh, let's look at uh, let's look at how it reacts when you plug it into a switch, because you're going to find this really interesting. Now, one of the things is remember it has hub detect, and what that means is if you plug it into the wall and and that patch panel is patched into a um, that circuit on the patch panel is patched into a switch. Well, this will identify that. Now, the first thing it will identify, or it will also show you, is uh, if it's a PoE switch, power over Ethernet, and that's important because sometimes you got a you got a um, uh, a VoIP phone that's powered over the Ethernet, or a Wi-Fi uh, unit that's in the ceiling and it gets its power from a, a PoE uh, switch. Well, not every port on some PoE sw uh, switches are, are power, or, and sometimes you can even program on the Cisco switches, you can program for no power on certain ports on that switch. And so you want to be able to identify whether or not it's getting power. Now the next thing it's going to do is it's going to tell you from the jack to the switch, you know, what category it will support. So what we're going to do is I'm going to plug in a, a really small uh, uh, Netgear um, switch and let's see how that acts. So here's my uh, Netgear switch and I'm going to take, I don't know, first of all I'm going to get rid of this red one. Trash. And I'm going to plug in, I'm going to plug into the Netgear just any port in the back. And I'm going to tell it to retest. So I'm going to push this button. I'm going to tell it to test. And it's kind of cool. You see it? It not only tests, it identified the fact that there was a switch there. And it said this switch is this switch and cable arrangement is good for uh, 10 base T. Uh, 
uh, half duplex, 10 base T full duplex, that's what the FD stands for, and then 100 base T uh, full duplex also, but it does not support 1,000 base T. And um, if you look on the bottom of the switch, it says, wow, look at that, 10 base T, and if I can get it right, 10 base T and 100 base T. So uh, it will actually prove to your customer, uh, or if you're the customer, it will prove to you that this is a, a properly cabled jack and that it will support um, you know, the categories um, uh, that are uh, check marked on the right there. So uh, that is really a fantastic tool. I have not seen that in an inexpensive tester. Again, <laughs> anything under uh, you know, like $500 is considered an inexpensive tester. And as a contractor, I do not want to put my five, six thousand, eight thousand dollar tester in the back of a, one of my trucks and have it bounce down the road and have it left somewhere or anything else. So this type of tester uh, is going to fit 99% of your needs. And it's just really a fantastic tester. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you its accessory kit that goes with it. And uh, by the way, it also has a timeout that if it doesn't see any changes, uh, to its, uh, what it's doing, its testing, everything else, it will time out and you can set that up in settings in the main menu uh, how long you want it before it, it, it's, it uh, times out. And there you go with that module. I like that nice snap, it's positive, it's not going to fall out. So let's try that again. Here's the module. Here's the module. So I'm going to put it in just like this. And hear that snap. I like that snap, it means it's not going to fall out. And it has battery save, so that screen's going to go out in a few minutes if you don't press it. Nice thing too is if you press the screen, you can make variations to all this and, and sometimes the variations, uh, you just want to go back to the factory default. So what you do is you just hold the button down here, is this button here, you just hold down for five seconds and it goes back to factory default. Okay, so here we are, we got a switch here, and what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a real life test with a regular Cisco switch. And uh, this is an older one, so I think it's 10 base 100, um, or 10 100 uh, base T, so we'll just see what it is. But again, you hold down the, the button for two seconds, get the big G, you hold down multi-pair testing for two seconds, let go. Hold down multi-pair testing for two seconds. It's setting up, it's getting ready, and it shows nothing. So we're gonna plug it in. Now, I'm gonna hit the retest, a little circle there, and then gonna hit it. And it instantly finds the hub, says, hey, I'm connected to a switch, not a hub. No one uses hubs anymore, I hope. Uh, but a switch, and it says it will work with 10 base T and 100 base T. So it does, it is a 10 100 uh, switch. It's an older one, sitting in the warehouse. And uh, so if you were uh, checking PoE on the switch, if this was a PoE switch, then this would tell you, um, you know, uh, whether it was a PoE switch or not. Okay, next we're going to plug into a PoE um, switch that's running our Cisco phones uh, here in the office. And, and you know, it's so quiet, no one will even know that the phone system or their phone is not unplugged. So let's give it a try. I'm going to unplug it now. And we're going to plug it in and immediately it says PoE, but we're going to run a test. Uh, we'll plug it back in, and as you can see, it says PoE. And it's, uh, again, uh, maximum is uh, uh, 100 base T. With PoE. And we'll plug in their phone. These, uh, this is what comes in the, um, in the kit. Uh, or in uh, the system when you buy it, it's going to come like this. Doesn't have a carry case. Doesn't have anything else. It just that's it. 
You have to have your own carry case. But leave it to, uh, to uh, Greenlee, actually thought this through, which is a great idea. They actually came up with, ta-da, a carrying case. So you can take your tester, remember these are two separate devices now, the carrying case and the tester, and you can slide your tester right in there, just like this, and it protects it. Let me turn this off. And um, so uh, that's the case. You can put all your stuff in there. I like buying a, a short patch cord, a bright color, and also putting it in there because then I can use it down there or I can use it up here when I'm, when I'm at the um, patch panel. But anyway, what's nice about this is you have these things in here, and these are identifiers. And notice on the identifier, if I can get it at the right angle, it says two. So remember, this is one, and now this is two. And it has uh, three, four, five, I'm going back and forth here, but it goes all the way up to eight. So you can take these identifiers, and you can plug them into your jacks uh, all over the place. And uh, then when it's time to identify it, you don't, you know, if you're a one-man job testing, you don't have to go back and forth to, to move your remote. You can just plug this in because it has shielded RJ45 at the end. Also, if you're doing coax and you're in a home and you just plug this in all over the place, you take note as to where number two is, number three is, or whatever else. And so when you're testing, remember we did this before, let's do it again. So when you're testing, the identifier is going to identify this remote as number one. You see? ID number one. And uh, of course, if you had the other IDs plugged into the wall, um, it would also identify those. So, um, Nice little tester. I'd always buy it with the, uh, the uh, case. It's a uh, nice heavy duty, some sort of like a canvas case. Little zipper, put everything in it. Man, it's right there. That's the best thing about it. The parts don't get lost in your truck and it's a little bit, a little padding on it. So it kind of protects it and um, you know, keeps, uh, keeps your tester nice and neat. Again, this is Jim with uh, CableSupply.com, and if you like this NetCat Pro 2 model number NC500, uh, you can see the SKU there, and um, type it in our website, and it will go right to it, and you can also see the SKU for the accessory kit, and I would advise you to buy both because it protects this little tester, and this is a great little tester. Uh, please like us on Facebook, uh, uh, also follow us on um, uh, YouTube. And thank you very much for watching our videos. We're always humbled by the fact that so many people have watched our how-to videos. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. And today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this YouTube installment of CableSupply.com.